Well, I think, I think your position's very much moved, hasn't it, from Nick Clegg and the TV debates with Nigel Farage. But I think what's interesting is you're constantly talking about no, the smoke and not, not, idea Nick about Clegg, Nick Clegg's position has not back. changed at all since the Russell's debates with Nigel Farage. Russell is taking powers from us day in day out. Look at what well, happened on the 1st nonsense. of this month. Yes, it's not nonsense at all. 40 well done, different areas advice. of competency were relinquished to Brussels on the 1st of November just this month. Uh, it, it, all the benefits that we have of Europe, and yes, of course there are benefits, all of those benefits we could have if we just had a trading relationship with Europe, which is what UKIP's asking for. Oh, well, like Norway, political you political union like we Norway. don't want. We don't want the flag, we don't want the anthem, we don't want so the laws the taking us anthem. over. Uh, you know, we don't want the well, parliament, we don't nonsense. want this uh, bizarre so this is a, an argument about flags the, in, and, in, in and the, national anthems, is it? I'm using it as a metaphor. Uh, it, you know exactly what I mean. We don't. No, I don't. That's why I'm asking union, the question. Right. And what I don't understand is why any of the, the main. So you're, you're suggesting a situation like Norway, are you? No, when when Norway to has to obey them. all the rules of the EU, but it has no say. Uh, influence. Okay. Well, let's talk about influence, have we? How many votes have there been at the Council of Ministers? 55 votes when we voted no and it's gone on to become law anyway. I'm sorry, we don't have any influence as it stands at the moment. It's, it's, it's a joke. Tell me this, uh, if you find yourself as one of the kingmakers mm. uh, in the day after the next, or the weekend after the next election, will you limit yourself to the, the sole demand that whoever forms the government will give you a referendum? I really don't know. Oh. I really don't know. Certainly, it's, it's got to be the number one demand, and I suspect uh, that that, yeah, I mean, that would be the ultimate deal breaker or deal maker, wouldn't it? But I think, again, we wouldn't go into coalition. It would definitely no, no, be a supply that. No, I understand arrangement. That you wouldn't do that. Mm. And is there concern on the Conservative side that, you ne that the expectations of the powers you can repatriate are never going to be met? Mm. No, I don't really agree with that, you know, and I've been a Eurosceptic all my life. I was a director of the well, No you're, campaign. You stood for UKIP. I was a UKIP candidate stood in 99. Probably for well, it's a Tory and a UKIP. Heard, <laughs> so that was when uh, they weren't Tory well. Switcher and a UKIP. They did okay in 99. <laughs> if, you, if you look at your graph, we didn't do bad in 99 when I was uh, there for them. But look, I left UKIP because they're basically, in my view, a counterproductive liability to anyone who wants a reform in, in Europe and anyone who's a genuine Eurosceptic. They undermined uh, the debate and the case against uh, joining the Euro. They're a liability to the no campaign in the euro debate we there are liability the now joining the euro thank goodness for that no Who no sorry no you the undermine the case for keeping the pound because you the ukip's argument at the time was directly aligned with britain in europe which was saying the only way to keep the pound uh, is to um, uh, you know you have to leave the european union if you want to keep the pound that's what britain and europe were saying is what ukip was saying they undermined well, the case. we now know that was complete nonsense because we've kept the pound and we're still in the european union but again yeah, ukip but now are actually the undermining the prospects of having a referendum on our future in the european union undermining the prospects of having that renegotiation and to answer this question, is a renegotiation possible? Of course it is. You know, people say, well, you can't do it. No one's tried yet. Tony Blair never tried. He was always in favour of passing more powers to the European Union. And countries like Germany and France, they don't want the UK to leave the EU. They recognise uh, that there's a, a political mood here that we want some powers returned. We want to stay in the single market, but we want certain powers back. And of course it's possible to have that negotiation. And what you do in these situations, you get a political settlement and then you sort out. You get the lawyers in and they sort out the legal stuff. All after. right. So this is completely doable. I'm absolutely confident David Cameron uh, can do it. And that's why, you know, we need a majority Conservative okay. government. Okay. We want to make this David happen. Cameron is <clears throat> to the increasing expansion of the European Union, isn't he? Which again takes us back to influence, because the more countries that join, the even less voting percentage share that we have, and the even less. No, but that's not that true. Is if you're bringing some powers back so that they become, uh, you know, a national you know, competence again, and you actually what they're not subject are to QMV. What we're going to get back? We're not going to get the right to control our own borders again back, are we? It's it's a fundamental founding principle of the European Union. It's not going to happen, and it's 75 percent of the people. That's for them. The immigration, this open border. Borders is the one thing that we want changed. That is the one thing that originally okay. David Cameron. Well, I just think UKIP are just. Try and UKIP are incredibly defeatist on this because they they're so they say it's impossible oh, I wish to I could renegotiate. Be positive, but I can't. All right. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I,